Uh, Wednesday, December 12, 2012. Welcome to Conversations, the official MTA podcast. My name is Alex Spiroglu and I'm joined today by Julius De Kampner. Uh, Julius is Quantitative Risk Strategy Director at Tyler Asset Management and will be presenting at the monthly MTA meeting of the UK chapter. The topic of his presentation is spotting trading opportunities using relative rotation graphs. Uh, both the presentation and the interview itself have been videoed and are available to watch at the MTA website along with the archives of all the UK chapter monthly meeting technical presentations and presenter interview videos. Now, without further delay, let's uh, talk to Julius. Julius, welcome to the show. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much for coming and joining us here in the UK. Um, my first question is, could you please give us some information about your personal and educational background before getting involved with technical analysis? My, well, I, my, in, in a former life, I would say, I uh, started out as a, um, a military officer in the Royal Air Force in Holland. Um, I studied at the uh, Royal Military Academy. Um, I, I did do an economic study there, so hence my eventually evolving into the financial world, but, uh, but that's my background. Um, and I then started, after my military career, I started to work as a portfolio manager for a company called Equity & Law, which is a life insurance company here in the UK. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist anymore. It's being bought by AXA Life, a big French insurance company. And um, while doing that, I got interested in technical analysis and stuff, and that's how it how I evolved yeah. further um, into the technical analysis space. Got it. So maybe you would touch upon that, how you first got into your technical analysis um, uh, experiences and how it progressed from there. Yeah, but the, the, first, the first experience was actually, during my study at the academy, I wrote a thesis on uh, options. Options theory was really, really new at that stage. We're talking the end of the 80s. <coughs> and um, I got a side job teaching retail investors to trade what, what is an option, how, how, what's a call, what's a put, how does it work. And the company that I did that for was involved in technical analysis. Um, obviously, trading options is a much more shorter term game. And I figured out that you needed something else than, you know, price to cash, cash to book ratios, because they don't change that much, and got involved in you know, technical analysis, saw some books, picked it up, and then you know, took it from there, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so could you, as I understand, you're a quantitative strategy director for Tyler Asset Management. Can you describe your day-to-day um, -day responsibilities and the most challenging aspect of your job for us, please? The, my, my daytime job is actually being a fund manager or a strategy developer and, and maintaining the models that we run at Tyler uh, in the asset management business. We have uh, a fund that we run and we have some managed accounts uh, around some trading strategies. And my job is to, uh, to maintain the, exist the existing strategies and make sure that they're traded correctly and reflected in the portfolios that we run. And meanwhile, thinking and testing and working on developing new strategies or improving the existing strategies. Okay. Um, the next part of the uh, interview is called Toolbox. Could you please talk about your favorite tools and techniques and what you specialize in? Well, that's an easy one. My favorite tool is, is RRG, of course, and uh, my, my specialization would be relative strength analysis in general, because RRG was born out of the interest I had in relative strength analysis. And then relative strength not as in you know, the RSI, but relative strength as in comparing sectors with a benchmark, individual equities with a sector index, you know, various country indices, asset classes, everything, everything that has to do with comparing securities with one another. I see. And I um, understand we'll be having the uh, presentation around that, but for the purposes of this interview, would you like to expand upon it briefly and say how you um, first became interested and how to morph into what it's today RRG? Well, we will talk for about an hour <laughs> uh, in a minute about that, but um, the, the short version is that my job was actually to um, sell technical research to institutional clients when I was a, on the trading floor of various investment banks. Um, my problem was always that uh, I had obviously prepared some sort of a pitch of an idea that I had, and you need to get through to the portfolio managers and the fund managers to pitch your idea 
um, about what you were thinking. And they were always busy and, you know, hard to, hard to get on the phone or hard to get their attention. And when you had them, they were always interested in something else than I had prepared. So what I wanted is, is a tool or something that I could put, basically could put in their face, which would show them their whole universe in one picture. So I would never be caught again that I had prepared something that they were not interested to listen to. So they could, and, and that is eventually evolved into an RRG plot because that's what gives you a complete picture of the relative positions of all the elements in the universe in one little graph. And that's what the beauty of it is. Okay. And um, the, so which people have been your greatest influences uh, that gave um, birth to uh, RRG? For example, if I asked you to recommend, for example, uh, three technical analysis books, uh, which ones would you recommend? Well, the, 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 on the book side, um, I, I, I don't have real, it's, it would be the classics, you know, technical analysis of the financial markets, you know, bring all, all the standard works, basically. There's not, there's not one standing out in terms of uh, individual people who uh, have influenced me. I would say there, there would probably be two um, or three. Uh, it's uh, the first one definitely is uh, is, is uh, an Englishman actually, uh, and I'm not sure if he's still alive. It's it's Richard Lake, so Richard Lake, who was a very famous analyst in the UK, um, and uh, he used to work for a brokerage firm, and he introduced me to the concept of relative strength, and um, um, he he was he was a master at that. He, he just taught me how to use it and how to pitch it, and that was. That he taught me that that was the tool to use in technical analysis to institutional people. And um, so I took it from there and that, that was basically was the beginning of my interest in relative strength analysis and it evolved and I got my own you know, way of doing stuff. Um, and uh, I, I speak a lot with uh, some people at uh, Fidelity and Jeff Hockman and Dave Keller are big on relative strength and, uh, and Dave Keller is, is, is a big African. He had some very good ideas that I managed to bring into. So he was, he was instrumental in the development of RRG from, from what I had on my little spreadsheet to what it is right now, actually. I see, all right. And um, again, technical analysis principles. If you could distill your market knowledge um, in a few actions, for example, don't fight the tape, mm. which would this be? Well, I've got this little uh, little quote that I always have on top of my Bloomberg screen, or, or it's, it's actually also the title of the chapter that I wrote for Paul Siena's book, uh, New Frontiers in Technical Analysis. Uh, and um, I'm not sure what the, what the word is in English for that, but it says, um, everything is relative strength, is everything. So basically it says everything, and if you emboss, for example, the um, uh, relative strength part, you get everything is relative strength, or you got relative strength is everything. So that, so that would be the, the whole thing because I feel that everything we do is, is uh, evolving around making choices. And um, you know, there's basically one tool in our toolbox to make choices in tactical analysis, and that is a relative strength analysis. Do I buy this or do I buy that? It's you know, relative strength analysis is the only tool that you can use to properly answer that question. Okay, understand. Um, of course, that brings us to our last part. Uh, fun fact, what does Julius do to relax outside of market hours? Do you have any hobbies? <laughs> yeah, I, well, the, the, the big hobby is uh, I am uh, actually uh, a field hockey umpire. Uh, I played the game long myself at a very high level and I'm now actually umpiring uh, at the highest level in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, being here in London in the UK, I might try to refer to the semi-finals at the Olympics when the Dutch beat England with nine goals to two, the guys that are playing in that team are on my pitch on a weekly basis. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> All right, okay, that um, I guess um, wraps up today's MTA podcast. My guest today was Julius De Kampner. For the MTA, my name is Alex Piroglu, and I'll be seeing you next time. Julius, thank you.